The engine is absolutely bone dry, which means one of two things. It's either got no oil in it, <laughs> <laughs> or, or it's, um, you know, sealed really well. Yeah, there you go. Did you hear that? Ba -ba 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 -ba? Yeah, what's that? delightful 2005 Porsche Cayenne, which I picked up pretty cheaply about a month ago for £3,800. Now, although there are cheaper examples out there, considering the value of this car when it was new, less than 20 years ago, I'm pretty happy with it, and I think it's somewhat of a bargain. But today is the all-important judgment day then for the Cayenne, because although I've been driving this thing pretty much trouble-free, and we'll get onto that in a minute, for the past month or so, Today we're taking it to ePorsche to get it up on the ramp to have a full overlook with Chris who we saw last time when we had my Porsche Boxster and see what's untoward with this car, see why it was so cheap and any hidden things that I might have missed. But I'm hoping obviously that there's not going to be anything too crazy. So I say this car's been almost trouble free because in the 2000 miles I've done in this thing now, there's been a few minor niggles here and there. If you watched my last video, I was having some issues with the indicator and the rear wiper, which I did buy a replacement for and haven't been able to get the old mechanism off myself. So maybe they can help me with that today. The, the wiper's actually fallen off now, it has gone. So I do need to get that sorted. The indicator issue, I managed to fix with some tin foil. Uh, it wasn't the bulb, it wasn't the connector at the back of the headlight unit. It was actually in the female side of the indicator housing itself, one of the metal contacts had come away. So I managed to sort of stick that back down and then put some tin foil around it for some extra connectivity. And in the past couple of weeks since I did that, I've not had any issues with my, my lights at all. Although a uh, headlight bulb did go as well, but I replaced that and it was just a bulb and it's fine. So the lights are, are all good, not had any other issues whatsoever. I did get one engine management light randomly when I started the car late at night, it was very cold outside and I left it idling for around five minutes before driving away. When I came to it, there was a EML on, and that was fine. I, I cleared it and thought, well, I'm coming to ePorsche in a few weeks, and we'll investigate it further then. And then hilariously, this morning on the drive, right now, EML came on. Very strange. What are the chances that it happens on the day? So, despite clearing it a few weeks ago, obviously it's come back. There is something. I'm hoping it's just like an O2 sensor or something like that. But we'll have to find out. I have actually got the car booked in today for a service. I think I asked for a major service, if not just an oil change. It's actually had a service in February of 2023. So it's only due an oil change next month or so anyway. So yeah, let's take it to ePorsche now. It's about an hour to go, 40 miles. Hopefully the car's all right on the drive there. We'll catch up again with the guys at ePorsche. We've not been there for a couple of years now. Catch up with Chris and have a run around the car and hopefully we don't find any nasty surprises. Oh, and very quickly, allow me to say a big thank you to Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video. Car Vertical is an essential tool for me when it comes to buying and checking out cars these days, because by using Car Vertical, you can discover things that the seller might not want to tell you about. Car Vertical has an absolutely massive online database, which can tell you whether the car you're looking at was potentially stolen or was damaged in a past life. For example, when I did a Car Vertical check on this, my Porsche Cayenne, it indicated a mileage rollback, which was a little bit concerning, but then when I cross-checked it with the history that came with the car on paper, it showed that someone had put in an erroneous kilometers mileage, which meant that there was this one dip in the mileage records where it looked like it had been rolled back. But obviously, that hadn't been the case, but it's very impressive that Car Vertical picked that up nonetheless. So if you are buying a car, or perhaps you just want to know a little bit more about your own car's history, I encourage you to do a Car Vertical check you can do so as well and get a discount using my code on screen and in the description. All the details are below. Thank you so much to Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video. Okay, 
Okay, so we've already checked the lights, we know they work, but we check every single control in the car, make sure they all work, all the seats. It's all good so far. This is quite an interesting spec, this one, because it's got things like illuminated sills. Yeah, oh yeah, it's got no I didn't heat notice seats. that. It's got the cruise control, but I guess that was probably standard. No memory function, obviously it's got the unstitched leather dash. But yep. I kind of love it. It has got Apple CarPlay that was fitted. Yeah, because one of the things that lets these cars down is that although they are, um, they were quite advanced for their time, they're obviously quite old now, um, yeah. 20 odd years old. The one thing is like the Bluetooth connection to PCM. So if you've got the Apple CarPlay in there, it's actually quite a, it's quite a nice thing, yeah. um, really. It actually makes you want to drive an older car rather than have all the new car, you know, because you've got the new technology in the old car. We've done a diagnostic. These grey icons here mean there's a fault in that system. I mean, a fault's not necessarily too bad a thing. Sometimes if a car's had a flat battery, it can log a fault. So some of them might be voltage related. Some of them might be a bit more sinister. So on a car like mine, that's 2005, do you reckon you would expect to see quite a few faults on there? Yeah, even, even, even newer cars, like there can be quite a few faults in them. As I say, some of them, with cars that aren't used very much, particularly 911s and boxers and stuff, cars that people don't ordinarily always lose, use, if the battery voltage goes a bit low, it can store actually quite a few faults. The faults in yours are, there's, there's quite a few, but most of them are, in a car of this age, I'm not surprised. Sometimes like, see PCM, PCM2, no signal communication, it's because there's an aftermarket Apple Play okay. unit in there, and it's not, you know, it, 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 it's not seeing the Porsche um, the Porsche PCM, so that's why it's bringing a fault up. So it's nothing to worry about. DME, there is a fault with a warm-up catalyst efficiency below threshold. So that is normally an issue with the catalyst. Is not probably the original one. It's not working as it should. So, so it's catalyst and converter related. Yeah. Which is very expensive. <laughs> it can be. It can be. Yeah. 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 It can be. So what would you suggest on that one then? Do you think it's something you can look at more or? Yeah, you'd have to look into it. Sometimes sometimes it could be a faulty sensor, but to be honest, normally when it does say catalyst efficiency, nine times out of 10, it is the catalyst that over time it's broken up or it's, you know, it's just at the end, end of its life. It's nearly, you know, nearly 20 years old. Yeah. So it's just come to that point. From memory, I think I priced one of these up before. I don't think there's many aftermarket options, but I don't think the actual genuine one is actually as expensive as it sounds. But there is two. I think there's a pre-cap and a main cap. But in terms of, there's nothing actually then wrong with the engine it's to do with? No, the... it's the emissions, okay. yeah. Interesting. These are quite sensitive, to be fair. We've had them with these lights on before. Cat efficiency goes through an MO. You know, you do a emissions test and go straight through. In short then, there's nothing on there to be particularly worried about at all. No. Well, that's pretty good going for a car that I've sort of bought a bit blind. Yeah. If it's my car, I wouldn't be worried with all of them, to that's be honest. really good. Yes, yeah, not at all. Music to my ears. Yeah. Happy days. Happy days. <laughs> Headlights, they're just starting to see that. I don't know if you can get a close-up shot of that. Quite common in these older cars with these headlights. There's kits that, uh, I think Meguiar's do a kit or something like that, that you could polish your headlights. You do it yourself or we do it and we actually put a lacquer over the top so it protects them from UV and stuff like that. Other obvious things on these cars. To be fair, these cars are quite good. Make sure things are secure. Damage we look for. Make sure the door's open. And then, so there's two struts on these. You have struts for the boot and you have struts for the window. Sometimes you get the window ones that fail, so they kind of work together. You've got to drop down like this bit of the headlining and get in, because they're actually, if you see where it's pivoted up here, they actually go along the roof, if you get what I mean. Yeah. So it's, um, they're not a two minute job like a 911 where it's just um, open the bonnet and pop, pop, and it's, and it's in and out, it's, it's a bit more involved. We just check in here. Sometimes um, if they have some roof, the roof drains run down here. This one hasn't, but if it did, the drains run down here and you get water um, gathering in there. But obviously it's all dry because we don't have roof drain. All these, um, I don't know if you can get that. Yeah. All these PR numbers are specs of the car. Interesting. So, and paint codes and interior trim codes and basically all the information about the car is, is on there. So you can look up all these, all these PR numbers and it will tell you all the specs we were talking about earlier, bows and um, illuminated sill plates and tailpipes and, and yeah, yeah. Um, 
It might be that one, actually. I'm pretty sure it would be sad if I did know that. X7F. I'm pretty sure an X number, if it's like a 911, is, a, is an upgrade. These lights, they always, they always seem to have a bit of moisture in them. Your one's actually not that bad, to be fair, but there is moisture in there. Here we are, the engine. So, 3.2 V6. You might recognise it. If you pull the Porsche bit off, which this yeah, just pulls off, you might recognise it from a Volkswagen Golf. So the R32 ran this engine, and also the A3 3.2 V6. So basically what we're doing is it's a service, so we will, uh, let me grab a light, we will have a look round, see there's loads of space around there, just look for all leaks. The belt, so the drive belt is here. So obviously it drives alternator, water pump, power steering, um, air con, etc. If you look at your belt there, I don't know if you can get that shot, there is a couple of little cracks on there, so okay. it would be advised to keep your eye on that, or you can replace it if you like. Um, that happened on my Boxster actually, the, the belt went, I was at the Euro Tunnel taking it to the Nürburgring, and it was a, yeah. a phone call to La Rose very quickly saying, so, what's happened? And I tried, yeah. to, tried to do it myself, but I think I ended up did it come here in the end, or I can't remember where it you went. Message, I remember you messaging me. You went to La Rose. You messaged I went me. To La Rose, but yeah. 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 Okay. That's interesting to know. So that. yeah, that belt is—it's just starting to crack. You know, the belt on one of these is not—it's—it's it's not difficult to do. You literally got to take this, this pipe out of the way, and then it's a spring-loaded tensioner. So it's just same as the Boxster spring. You know, spring it over. Make sure you know the routing of the belt because a lot of people take them off and then go, oh. <laughs> How does that go? And then spend the next half an hour working out the route. Yeah, and then it's just one off, one on. So it's like half an hour's labour plus, plus a belt, really. It's not, it's not really much at all. So yeah, then it's actually bone dry. There's no real signs of any leaks. So in here, this compartment, which we will remove, is brake fluid reservoir. That's full. That's bang on the mark. And this here, it's an engine control unit, so they're all the DME. And if you look down here, there are drains down here. And what do drains get clogged up by? Leaves. So yeah, it's quite tricky to actually get those out. On the late KNs, later KNs, this DME actually sits vertically. So you can imagine what happens with that when the drains get blocked. Fills up with water, DME goes down. That's quite an important one to look at. So if, if, you're, if you're a bit of a DIY, you want to do stuff yourself, that's definitely one to, to check. Check your front drains. And that could go a long way to keeping these cars fresh and on the road. And in here we have a fuse box and heater inlet vent. And down there, you can't really see it down there, but it actually looks quite clean in this side to be fair. There's a couple of leaves, but well, believe it or not, I have taken these off before and it's been like quite full of water and you think oh there might be a fish swimming around in there but um that's a jump point because obviously the battery is under the passenger seat so it's quite tricky to access but that's a you know a power point there uh, power steering that's good levels good in there air filter is under here take this trim off to access and then over this side we have got coolant and we just take a look around, check for leaks, you know, just looking for anything really. But uh, coolant level's spot on. Because these engines are getting a bit old now, we also find bits like these these plastic breather pipes. And so, see that there? See there's a split there? Yeah. Yeah, it's quite common on these now. So that is the takeoff for your brake vacuum servo. Okay. So, I mean, that's split, but because that's that pipe sucks, it, it kind of it's sucking itself on but if you were to sort of move that it would just and then you'd have a leak so then the engine would run rough oh, okay and you might find it might affect your um, brakes you know your brake pedal might go hard because it's the assistance for your brake servo and they're quite common they're quite common they are to brake there and these breather ones here as well they're quite common core packs are all across the top here one two three four five six and although this is a V6, it's not actually a V6, they're just offset. Um, everyone who probably knows about these has done their research on that, but yeah, um, 
BR6 engine was uh, Volkswagen's idea quite a while back, and it's it's actually a it's actually a very good solid engine. It's looking alright, actually, mate. To be fair. So that's that's a pretty good result so far, then, isn't it? There's mm. not really anything to worry mm. about in there. Drive belt, a few leaves in your scuttle, um, and um, a little bit of a split in your in that in that hose. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. And even your under bonnet light still works. Look at that. <laughs> Don't see many of them still working. I get extra points for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but to repair these cars, they're quite well thought out as well. You know, they're, they're, you know, you do get jobs that are quite difficult and tricky to do, but on the whole, they're, they're quite well methodical and well thought out on how to repair them. So yeah, that's good. Right, okay, so we go up like halfway, do the usual checks you do on every car really, tyres, Michelin's. Yeah. Yeah, did you put these on? No, it came, no? came, came as you Pilot see Sport it. Sport 4s, SUVs. I know, I know. 2020 date stamp, so yeah. fairly new. Brakes, pretty good. Discs are fine, pads are approximately just, just not, not quite half worn, so they're fine. Um, you do have sensors on here, same as most modern cars. So when the pads get low, it'll bring up a light, and then you know, I need pads or discs or whatever. Wheels, a little bit uh, scuffed and stuff, but they're not bad condition for the, for the age of the car. So you, these have got springs and shocks. You can get these with air. Definitely, these are more reliable than the yeah, air the suspension. Ride, the ride on this is my only complaint. It's a bit firm. Obviously, the big wheels okay. don't help with that. Yeah. I always wanted yeah. air, but actually the fact that I don't have it is probably a good thing. Yeah in terms of running costs. The age of the air now, or the air stuff that's on these cars, they are sort of, you know, they do come, you come out to car one morning, it's just all yeah, the way down, you're like, oh no. Oh, so I know you know this. all about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This arm has definitely been replaced at some point. Yeah, so it looks pretty fresh, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. These brake hoses, you see that? Yeah. Let me get that. See, it's just starting to perish in there. Okay. That's a common point oh, I see. for where these perish. You can't see any of the cord. I mean, it, it would just be a, an advice to sort of check it next MOT stroke service, really. Okay. Give it a wiggle. That's fine, there's no play in that. And then put it on lock. Check drive shaft gaiters, lower arms, roll bar drop links. They're starting to perish, but as long as they're not making any noises and there's no excessive play, I, w I really wouldn't, wouldn't be too concerned, really. Make sure the gaiters are good. Yep, they're fine. That's pretty cool. This side. Well, let's open, check, check these little lights here. They always discolour a bit. Sometimes these are broken because obviously where they are, they just get smashed to pieces. You can look through here, see AC condenser through there. And coolers, doesn't look like there's any, anything wet or any obvious signs of leaks. This side, again, check the spring. It's all fine. These gaiters are starting to, you know, split and deteriorate, but it's not something that I would actually say Oh, it just protects the, the dust cover for the damper going up and down, dust getting in there and ripping the seal. But I mean, if you, it's a lot of work to do that just for a, a 20 quid gator. Yeah. Um, so really you would sort of change that if the damper started leaking or the spring broke or something like that. I mean, yeah, again, this arm, that's quite fresh as well, like the other side. Um, looks quite new, bushes are good. Brake hose. Again, they're starting to perish, just on there, on that corner there, which is quite common. Brakes, same as the other side, so that's good. They're all wearing evenly. You've got same brand of tire, same age of tire. Again, drive shaft gaiters. I mean, the drop link bushes on both sides are just starting to perish in there, but as I said, I wouldn't worry if there's no, um, you know, if they're not making a noise when you go up the road or anything, I, I probably wouldn't worry. Maybe when you get other bits done on the suspension, you have to take it apart. Maybe that's the time to change it um, in my book. So that's fine. Right, rears you have. So you've got Falcons on the back. Still a, you know, okay brand, 2022. So they're, they're fairly new. Good tread on there. Rear discs are just starting to, you know, it's not that much of a lip, but they're just starting to corrode on the edge. Maybe it's been parked up for a while before you bought it, so it looks like it's lack of use, but a good old... I know you're starting to do a few miles in it. They might clean up, but they are... They've gone a bit sort of 
shiny and you know just uh, again wait till the pads wear out and do the dis you know when the pads are when the pads are out there's no point doing it now for that if they were really badly corroded it'd be like yeah okay <laughs> but no let's have a look up in the wheel arch for any sort of damage or anything but that's all fine a bit of mud from a bit of bit of your green lane in or something corroding again little bits of corrosion are starting to form but that's very minor surface corrosion um, just looks like it's been that's been opened on something and then it's you know normal stuff really again the disc disc a bit better this side but pads are fine so there's nothing to worry about there um tire is same falcon same size same year right let's uh take it even further up and we'll have a look i know it's a bit you're looking forward to so we'll have a look right underneath So now we can see everything. Stanley, can you get a better view of the belt, belt from down here? Oh yeah. So you can see that. I mean, it actually looks, it's just weird how it stopped on that alternator pulley and it's got that crack on it, which happens to be right there. Which is was quite handy really, because yeah. we saw, you know, what was wrong? This is the anti-roll bar, quite a big old, not big car, big roll bar. Um, again, the engine is absolutely bone dry, which means one of two things. It's either got no oil in it, <laughs> <laughs> or, or or it's um, you know it's it's sealed really well. So yeah, that's good. You see the radiator, so you can check for if there's any leaks there, which that all looks good. You spin the fans because these have a tendency to seize up. They all turn nicely. All the pipe work, just checking everything really. More suspension stuff. So that is the adjuster for your wheel alignment. This one does your caster. This one up here does your camber. And obviously this one does your, does your toe, yeah. your steering wheel. Quite often you come to do a four wheel alignment and these will be seized into the bush, the bolt into the bush. A bit like your Boxster, where yeah. the alley and the steel yeah. seize together and you can't adjust it. So that's why you go to do an alignment and you end up changing all of these bits just to get an alignment done, which why it's kind of best to leave it until it's sort of, you know, a bit worse for wear and then do the whole lot in one go. Really. Yeah. Also with suspension is these big things, subframe. This is a big old unit and it has these rubber bushes and yours have looked better. So that bush presses into the subframe, which I've changed and they are not very nice to change. So uh, yeah, um, yours are pretty bad. Okay. Um, really. Um, oh, it was but, all going so well. I know. I mean, they're not. It's, it's not the worst thing in the world, to be fair. It's just a big, heavy, heavy job. See, there's another one mount here. This one's sort of starting to go. It's just the age of the car. They're all sort of parting. Um, the front ones are worse than the back ones. So some MOT testers might. I don't think they'd fail it on that. But as long as there's no play, but they could, you know, they could have a moan about it. I, I would just say. We'd advise you to sort of get them done at some point in the near future, really. Front differential, you said the fluids have been done I at think some so, point. But but it's had a lot of fluids yeah. changed. But even if you need to change the fluids, it's not, a, it's not a massive job. It's literally drain it out, refill it through the filler, um, but make sure the filler plug comes undone before you undo the drain plug. If you're DIYers, because you undo the drain plug and you can't refill it. That's my top tip. And we walk back along the car, gearbox, filter in there, which gets changed periodically. Front carbon shaft, so transfer box here, and that transfers, obviously, the four-wheel drive system to the front wheels. Exhaust, obviously check the exhaust. This has seen better days, isn't it? Is that the bit that might be throwing up that EMF? It could well be, because you've obviously got a leak here, minor leak, because if you look at that, I can actually pull that Ah. Apart. Yeah. Yeah? So what I would advise is repair that. So seal that up and you know, what we do is we we would heat that up, bang the studs out, put uh, stainless nuts and bolts with a new gasket. This clamp looks a bit a little bit suspect as well with all the damp around it. So maybe it's worth just a new clamp as well. And then we would um, clear the codes and then, you know, drive it and see how you get on. That would be my my advice. Again, you get a good view up here of the of the engine if you can see through there. So up there, the big plastic bit on the right above the gearbox, the thermostat housing. 
they're quite fun to change when they decide to leak or fail. And then obviously we look around the car corrosion. So I mean, these cars are quite, they're pretty good for corrosion. This chassis is, looks pretty good. Sill panels might start, yeah, yours is just starting, to, but that's just the outer. Just, you probably know about that, just the outer bit there. Yeah, my Jag needs new sills. My oh dear, time. yeah. Inner and outer. Yeah, it's just something we check, but that's all all right. This here, believe it or not, the battery is inside there, but obviously you get to that from inside the car. Moving down, prop shaft. These like a prop shaft. They like to, this bearing in the middle collapses. Your one seems okay, but on the, especially the V8 turbos, these, if you think how much power one of them's got, it literally, you can get these in and you drive up the road and you can hear go thump, 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 thump. And literally that bearing, you get it, it goes dong, 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 dong. It's just, yeah, prop shaft's quite common, but not so much on the V6 ones because they haven't got as much, which is another good thing to maybe get a, you know, the smaller engine one is a bit more, if you're on a, on a budget or, you know, you don't want to put an expensive carbon shaft on it every however long, you know, fuel tanks or fuel tank. Saddle tank goes over, these straps corrode, which yours are corroded, but you just advise they're corroded, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be rushing to, to replace them. Yeah, and then the rear subframe, obviously a lot of surface corrosion building on here, um, which is, again, common for the age of the car. These rear arms, again, you've got camber and toe adjusters, so camber on the rear arm. These rear arms here, these have a tendency to bend I don't know whether yours is, yeah, yours is slightly bent. If you can get a view straight down there, you can see it's, see it's slightly oh, curved. Yeah, 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 it should yeah. be straight. Ah. And Porsche actually changed the design of those. I've seen them before, they come in and they're really, really bent. And yeah, it's just the weight of the car. Okay. And they're like double, sort of double skin now. Oh, right. um, you can check the rear springs. Again, a bit corroded, but fine. Dust cover, split. Wouldn't worry about that until you have to do something on the suspension, rear differential, nothing really goes wrong with those. Um, drive shaft gaiters, drive shafts, all fine. Have a look at the brake lines, handbrake cables, all just normal stuff. But it's all, it's all looking, although a bit, a bit dirty and corroded, there's nothing that's jumping out at me to say, you know, roll bar again, corrosion. Tailpipe clamp is just starting to split across there. Let me pick that up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're quite common. Um, on this side. On this side must have been replaced at some point. That one's all right. But yeah, and that's obviously where your tow bar starts in in your socket. But all in all, it's just normal, normal K and stuff and nothing, you know, nothing that's going to, nothing that would put me off this car, really. That's amazing news. Hmm. Again. You've done it again. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so walk around with Chris here at ePorsche is done then. And apart from those bushes on the subframe, a couple of little things with the exhaust clamps and that little gap between the pipe and the cat, I think it was, it, it's pretty good. I, I, I've called this video obviously everything that's wrong with my cheap KN, but that title seems somewhat redundant now because obviously I seem to have bought a good one. I mean, it was still cheap, but I think it's a pretty good car. So very very happy indeed now the oil pan is there we're going to be doing uh oil changes to a service on the car while it's here you will notice i've been joined by another 955 also silver also with a black interior uh this one is a turbo though as you can see and uh, it's quite interesting to see them right next to each other i have to say i think i actually prefer the tailpipes on mine with the sort of oval shape as opposed to this more square like one here uh, but this one has some 22 inch wheels in it, which are crazy. I can't imagine what the ride quality would be like on here, although the air suspension probably helps that somewhat. And it's on general grabber tires, which I really like the look of. Yeah, that's having some work done. And uh, Chris is coming now to start with this, which uh, hopefully it's gonna just be better for it having this done. The sump plug is just above here. But you gotta be careful, it's right in front of the diff. And if the oil is too hot, it can, come out, spray everywhere. <laughs> he moves <Right>. back <laughs> and make a bit of a mess, but see if I can do it without making a mess. Your doesn't look, doesn't look too bad to be fair. Right, next is the oil filter, which uh, does make a mess because it is there ah. on top of the subframe. So, you can get 
It's red and white. Yep. There she goes. Told you. So there you go. Wow, look at that mess. So what you're supposed to do, what the idea is behind it, is in the bottom there, that Allen key, you're supposed to just undo that. Yeah. And then it drains it, drains it all out first, yeah. rather than, yeah, just letting it all go. Yep, new oil filter with new seal. So we'll put that up there and then we tighten it up to 25 Newton meters. So I'll nip it up with this and then put the torque wrench on there. You shouldn't over tighten these because they're only plastic and they have a tendency to, because they're old and brittle, sometimes they crack. And there we go. Right, so uh, oil and filter's all done. Sump plug's tight, oil filter's tight. We put in just over six litres of oil. These hold about six and a half. So then we're gonna run it up, let the oil filter fill up, and then check the oil level, get that right. Obviously we've got the pollen filter to do to finish the surface off. And then we're gonna do the, uh, have a look at the rear wiper arm for you as well. Yeah, there you go. Did you hear that? Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, what's that? It sounded like it was knocking. Oh, there you go. So it could be a dirty throttle body. Okay. So these suffer. Uh, quite a lot of these ones with dirty throttle bodies. So that's the flap adjusting, it's quite common. So we're all done. We just managed to do the rear wiper, which was <laughs> three men, a blowtorch, and a lot, of, a lot of pulling. We managed to do the wipers. So thanks so much for doing yeah, that. No worries. Done an oil change and the filters, yep. and well, the inspection, as we saw earlier. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely quite pleased with that result. Apart from you know the obvious stuff that we pointed out in the video, which yeah. to be honest is is trivial compared to what you could end up buying one of these cars and need to spend on it's um it I, think, was, I think you've done really well thank you i think it was one of the driest engine bays i've ever seen on yeah. something this old yeah yeah um so i'm dead chuffed about Absolutely. that there's a couple yeah. little bits isn't there like those subframe bushes yeah. uh yeah. obviously the tiptronic issue which i've talked about before where it yeah. won't stay in gear yeah that would be just you recommend just probably just changing the micro switch yeah and seeing if that fixes yeah. it yeah. This is not something you can diagnose really, is it? It's quite, it's quite tricky to be yeah. fair, but yeah. yeah. And obviously we had a little bit of a rough sort of idle, but we think that's probably just the yeah. throttle body that needs a clean. Yeah, but that's what, you start with the simple things, you know, yeah. clean the throttle body out and see where you go from there. But that normal, to be fair, that normally does it on these cars. You know, they, they're quite sensitive to that kind of, kind of thing, but yeah. Yeah, so for now then, it's okay for me to just carry on using it as per usual. I think the, the MOT is actually up in the summer, so maybe yeah. if I come and get some work done around then, we can address maybe the, the bushes on the subframe and need to have a quick look at the exhaust where it's yeah. coming away a little bit of the catalytic yeah. converter. So yeah. maybe in six months or so, come back, yeah. maybe get some of those Recheck things addressed. the items. Yeah. Um, make a plan, maybe do another video. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm and, always uh, happy. Yeah. I always enjoy coming here and making videos. And I know you <laughs> yeah. guys watching enjoy it too. So no if you have enjoyed this one, do give it a thumbs up. And make sure you subscribe if you want to see more. If you want to see more Chris in the future, make sure to let us know in the comments below. But yeah, thanks so much to the guys at ePorsche. If you're interested in coming here yourself, I'll leave their details in the description below. Thank you all for watching this video. And I'll see you again. Hopefully we'll see you again very, very soon.